New research shows that popular weight loss drug Zepbound could be helping people with obstructive sleep apnea. So what does this mean for people who suffer from this disorder and also what happens from here? Dr. Veronica Sessi is an obesity and medicine and sleep medicine expert. She's here with us actually from Medical Wellness Journey to help us explain what exactly is going on here. So they did a study to figure out the benefits there. Yes, yes. So thank you for having me. But um, we, we've always known that a huge risk factor for sleep apnea is being overweight. About 70% of our patients have obesity as a risk factor. So um, Terzepatide or Zepound recently did a study where they're looking at uh, basically the impact of weight loss on apnea and um, kind of part of a protocol to maybe use it as an indication. So again, we've always known that anywhere from a 10 to 15% reduction in your body fat can reduce your apnea by about 50% with moderate apnea. Um, they have an ongoing clinical trial called the Surmount Study where they've looked at 469 patients that have a body mass index of 30 or up and have moderate to severe apnea. And the results are promising. They're showing about 20% reduction in body fat and about two-third percent, two-third of a reduction in the apnea hypopnea index. Okay, so for people who aren't familiar with sleep apnea, what is it and how does it work and affect the body? Right, so it's basically it's a condition where airflow is um, pausing throughout the night, so we are not breathing throughout the night, and how that affects the body is it offers a dip in oxygen, which basically puts our body in this panic stress state. And as a result, we're seeing an increase in our blood pressure, blood sugars, cortisol level, and your body's basically reviving itself throughout the night to wake up. So as I stated before, a risk factor is weight, and that's because of occlusion in the airway associated with larger tongue, more tissue in the throat, the back of the throat, and weight along the, the different body parts that affect our breathing as well. Weight is not the only risk factor, so you know it's it's a, a condition where we can see in other patient populations despite, and it can affect our cardiovascular health, it can affect us in terms of our pulmonary health and increased risk of diabetes and, and other heart conditions. So it sounds like it's not the drug itself that is helping, it's the fact that it is helping encourage weight loss that exactly. is then leading to these results. Exactly, yeah, so it's the secondary effect of the medication. So they have not done a trial yet looking at the medication and how it can impact people who are of a normal weight and have apnea. Um, that's something that they're considering doing. But again, this data hasn't even been published yet. Um, but in the last couple of weeks, Eli Lilly did release it and indicate that they are um, likely going to use this as an indication for their medication. It's already an indication to use these GLP-1 agonists for a body mass index of 30 or more or 27 or more with a comorbid condition, which apnea is considered to be a comorbid condition. Um, but it, it is something I think that their goal is to improve the availability of the medication and the patient population that can be utilized um, and, and use the medication. Okay, getting back to the disorder, uh, it sounds very dangerous to stop yeah. breathing in your sleep. Yes. Uh -huh. What could some of the consequences of that be? So we can see increased risk of heart disease, like high blood pressure, coronary artery disease, increased risk of things like congestive heart failure, rhythm issues of the heart. We can see increased risk of diabetes. Um, obesity is something that is associated with the condition also, and, it, and it's a reciprocal effect. So if we're overweight, our risk is increased, but it can increase your risk of gaining weight also because it works on our hunger hormones and our metabolism is impacted as well as the um, hormones that make us feel full. So um, that's another risk factor that we can see. We can also see attention, concentration, focus issues, memory problems. There is some association with cognitive disorders also. Okay, so if this is someone, something that someone is considering, uh, how do they go about taking the steps to possibly try this medication? Right, so with the medication really, I mean, it has certain indications again, so you'd wanna talk to your doctor. Um, and I, I definitely recommend doing a comprehensive weight loss approach. So, you know, when we see patients for this, it's not just prescribed medication and that's it. So you have to really work at modifying your diet, activity level, behavioral modification. So it's a comprehensive approach because the medication is very effective, but it's a not long-term effectiveness. If you go off the medication, the weight comes back. So if you, if you um, have approach weight loss with other strategies and have had difficulty, it is something to consider. It's a nice adjunct therapy along with other ways to address weight issues. Okay, so helping usher in a lifestyle change. Exactly. Yeah. Dr. Veronica Sessi, thank you so much for joining us. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you so much.